Energy Media readers, uh, today we're going to be talking to Sam Abelsamid of Navigant Research about an event he went to yesterday at the General Motors plant, I believe it was in Flint, Michigan, or one of the Michigan cities, and there's some really, really cool stuff coming along in electric vehicles, and Sam, welcome to the interview. Uh, well, I'm glad to be here, Markham. No, look, I'm just going to throw this open. Give me kind of an overview of what went on yesterday at this event. So, yeah, actually it was this morning, uh, and it was at the GM Tech Center in Warren, Michigan. Uh, it was in the uh, the design dome where uh, GM does, when they have new vehicles that are in development, uh, they take them into the design dome to review new product designs. And what they had there was uh, they did a presentation showing us uh, their new, uh, what they're calling their BEV3 architecture, or uh, and particularly their, their Altium battery system. Kind of a strange name, but it's probably you know they, something that they made up so that they could get a trademark on it. Uh, and they also showed us uh, about let's see, eleven new electric vehicles that are going to be coming to market over the next couple of years. So uh, let's start with the the battery system, which is the the core of what's going to be going into all the new GM EVs. Uh, so this is their what they're calling their third generation EV architecture. Um, the first generation was the EV1 back in the 19, late 1990s. Second generation is the Bolt. Uh, and so this is their third generation, and it's going to be used across the board on all their new electric vehicles. And um, the, the, as I said, the core of it is the, the battery. Uh, they've developed a new cell, new lithium-ion cell chemistry, in collaboration with their partners at LG Chem. Uh, and... Unlike most of most of the EVs that are out there today, use what's known as an NMC chemistry. So the anode or the the sorry the cathode of the the cell uh, has a coating that's a, a mix of nickel, manganese, and cobalt. And um, the those those three materials account for the bulk of the cost of lithium-ion batteries, particularly the cobalt. Uh, so cobalt is expensive, and it's also hard to get. Well, great. Um, now, I assume then that we're talking about a drop in the cost of, uh, of batteries. Um, are we down below now uh, $100 per kilowatt hour? Yeah, um, they are saying that the, the cost of these cells will be less than $100 a kilowatt hour. Um, and that's because what they've done is reduced that cobalt content by about 70%. And they've actually added in aluminum. So now it's an NMCA cell with aluminum. And so that gets them down to a, under $100 a kilowatt hour. And with some really clever design things that they've done with the pack design as well, they've also dramatically reduced the cost of that. They've removed, eliminated about 80% of the wiring in the battery pack. Um, and also uh, they've integrated the battery management system with the individual modules, which is going to allow them to uh, potentially mix and match modules in a pack that have different cell chemistries inside those modules. And it'll also make it easier to reuse those modules after the, the battery le reaches end of life in the car, reuse it for things like stationary storage applications. Well, th this is just amazing. I had an interview with a, a battery scientist uh, early last year, and he said, you know what, it's not so much the chemistry breakthroughs, but it's going to be engineering breakthroughs. And this sounds like that's just right consistent with his comments. Yeah, there's a, there's a lot of very clever engineering. I mean, certainly, the, you know, some, some cell breakthroughs here or some chemistry breakthroughs. But, yeah, there's definitely a lot of interesting engineering, um, not just in the pack, but also uh, things that LG Chem has done in terms of the way they're, they're actually manufacturing the cells so that they can get uh, higher throughput, shorter cycle times on the cells and uh, actually manufacture more cells uh, in a shorter period of time. Now, I was fascinated by something the CEO, Mary uh, Barra, said, and that is you can't sell an EV unless it has 400 miles of range. That's just um, a little under 700 kilometers up in uh, Metro Canada, and that's amazing. I mean, uh, is that the, the target for all of these new models? Um, well, I think that that kind of maybe goes a little bit beyond what she actually said. Um, you know, what their, their target is, you know, having, uh, especially in the higher end models, 400 miles of range to be competitive in the marketplace today. And this is actually something uh, back in December at a meeting with uh, Steve Carlisle, the president of Cadillac. Uh, he talked about this as well. You know, 300 miles of range for premium vehicles is table stakes today. If you don't have 300 miles, 
you're you're just not going to be competitive, especially you know against brands like Tesla. And you know they are aiming for for at least 400 miles available on all of their more premium models, entry level models like you know the Bolt and and entry level crossovers. Um, you know, we'll probably, you know, they'll still be in the range of 250 to 300 miles. Um, and in some markets, you know, you'll have versions that have shorter ranges. Like in China, they're, they're not necessarily as interested in, you know, um, you know, the really long range, you know, so uh, some markets where they, they demand a lower price, you'll have versions with shorter ranges as well. But that's really interesting because you and I are both uh, drivers in North America. Probably we take long trips and it's starting to get to the point where, uh, I may, like, let's say if I'm driving from uh, Vancouver to Calgary, it's approximately 1,000 kilometers, I may only have to stop and fuel up my EV, charge my EV battery once, and that essentially mimics uh, the trip that I would take with a, with a gas-powered car. Uh, yeah, and you know, so they're they're working with the charging network providers to expand the charging networks and also to to integrate um, access to the different charging networks through one app, one smartphone app for for GM. Um, but they're also uh, increasing the charging uh, speed of the batteries. So you know, they're they're going to have different configurations of their their batteries for different vehicle types. Some of them are going to be 400 volt systems. Some are going to be 800 volt systems. Uh, like in, in, the, in the Hummer and in the Cadillacs, they'll have 800 volt systems. But one thing they've said is that um, all of them will be able to add about 100 miles of range in about 10 minutes. Uh, so about 160 kilometers of range in about 10 minutes, um, which, you know, for most people is going to be, you know, plenty. And, you know, if you are taking, you know, a thousand kilometer trip across the, across the Rockies, um, you'll, uh, you know, Stopping for, you know, for a half hour, you know, to get a full charge or, you know, maybe 40 minutes to get a full charge is probably, you know, you'll probably be more than ready for, for a break like that anyway. Yeah, exactly. I mean, you're going to take a lunch break during that, mm -hmm. that trip and why not, if you can charge during it. Uh, anyway, so that, that's terrific. Now let's talk uh, sticker price because this has always been uh, kind of the last uh, threshold uh, for EVs competing with gas power cars. Now that battery costs are dropping, can we expect to see sticker prices at or below those of gas powered cars? Um, yeah, t certainly in the next few years, that will be the case. GM's not talking about the price of any of these particular new models just yet, because uh, they're, not, they're not ready to launch them yet. Um, but uh, they will, you know, one of the things they talked about is, you know, the, the big challenges for EVs, you know, besides charging, uh, is affordability. And, you know, today, you know, a, a Bolt, you know, here in the U.S., the starting price for a Bolt is, is $37,000. Um, so it, you, they, they recognize that they need to have more affordable EVs. And that's part of the drive uh, to get the cost of the battery, the battery being the single most expensive component in these vehicles. Get that cost down and, you know, you can start to get those, those sticker prices down on these vehicles, make them more accessible to more people and you know, offer them in a, in a broader range of market segments. You know, so you, you hit the kinds of vehicles that people actually want to buy. The other thing I found interesting about Barra's comments, uh, assuming I got those right, uh, is uh, GM intends to make a profit on, the, on these vehicles. And it wasn't that long ago that many automakers were saying that you know, maybe they were gonna lose $9,000 per unit and they seem to have turned that around. Now they're gonna be profitable. Uh, that is that, that is the goal, and that's part of why they've developed this this common set of components, electrical components, so motors that can be scaled to different sizes, batteries that that can be scaled using the same core components, um, get those economies of scale, and get that profitability. So you you know one of the things that uh, they mentioned this morning, Mark Royce, the uh, president of GM, was talking about you know today across the entire GM lineup. They have about 550 different combinations of engines and transmissions, um, you know, with uh, across all the different vehicles they sell. With this electric drive system across the entire range of vehicles from small cars all the way up to big full-size pickup trucks, they're going to have about 19 different combinations. And that'll dramatically reduce the cost, you know. So having everything using different mixes of the same component set will help a lot, will help GM achieve profitability and also get the, the price point down where people can actually buy them. And, and uh, Mary Barra talked about uh, by 2025, their target is to be selling 1 million electric vehicles annually. 
Well, now that uh, raises the question, are, are, uh, is this automaker, are all of the EV automakers going to be able to supply enough product to meet demand? Because I, based on, the, based on cost, based on range, based on all of that, I, I would expect EV adoption is going to start uh, taking off. Yeah, the uh, the big bottleneck right now is battery supply. Uh, there's just not enough batteries out there, not enough manufacturing capacity for lithium ion batteries. And all of the, the big battery makers, LG, uh, Samsung, uh, SK Innovation, CATL, uh, and Panasonic are all ramping up their production capacity. Uh, and we'll see a lot more production capacity. And part of that ramp up is a plant that uh, GM, uh, they formed a joint venture late last year with LG Chem. Uh, in Lordstown, Ohio, uh, near the, uh, the the assembly plant that they closed last year, they're building a cell manufacturing plant. So GM is going to be manufacturing cells in partnership with LG uh, in Ohio and bringing those to, to Michigan to assemble into vehicles and also to other locations. And by the time that plant is fully ramped up, uh, fully operational in a, in a couple of years, uh, they will have 30 gigawatt hours of capacity there, uh, which, you know, will that, that will be, you know, that will cover about half of their, their needs, you know, and they'll also have additional capacity uh, from other suppliers and, and other locations, particularly in China. Uh, you know, they'll be getting uh, batteries from Chinese suppliers over there. Uh, so it'll, um, they, they're definitely working to ensure that they have enough capacity to, to handle the demand. Well, that, this is fascinating, Sam, and I'm really glad you took time out of your busy day to have a chat with us because uh, it looks like we are on the cusp of that inflection point that we've been waiting for for a long time with electric vehicles. And uh, I look forward to uh, chatting with you again in the near future as we see more and more of these exciting technical developments. Yep, and we'll talk to you again soon.